Hello there, Jeremy Carver Guru here. Hope all is well today. We are working on this one terabyte Seagate hard disk drive. Uh, it's this hard drive right here. Uh, it's a Seagate 7200.11. It's coming out of an external drive. Let me show you. It's, uh, it's this guy right here. Uh, these externals, uh, many years ago, were a were a pain in the neck to remove and it still is a pain in the neck so this, this is kind of like a blast from the past uh, good times uh, but yes so with these drives typically these guys have firmware issues if they spin up and they don't make any clicking noises anything that is out of the normal uh, it would indicate that they have a firmware problem so typically what you want to do here is uh, make sure that first the electronics belong to this drive sometimes people swap them and they put the wrong PCB on here, the non-native one, and that's going to be a problem. So first, uh, we make sure that we back up the firmware on it and check that the serial number belongs to this drive, uh, showing that this PCB belongs to the drive. So that's the serial number, and it ends in W1LC. And so if we look at the drive serial number, you see, it ends in W1LC. So that's the correct PCB on the drive. So that's good. And now we are going to address the firmware problem. Uh, we are using a method that is done through ASLAB. There is also a manual method that you can do using the terminal, using different software. Uh, this one is just easier. So we got everything prepped up here. We're going to remove this. And we are going to insert those screws back in here. Um, so like I said, if the drive is making like clicking sounds or it's not spinning or something along those lines, then the problem is different. It's not firmware. It's electronic, it's mechanics and so on. This one spins up fine. It doesn't make any noises and the electronics work fine. So more than likely firmware issues, which is very common on this family of drives. Okay. So let's see here. The drive spins up. And... Let's see if the fix goes through. Okay, I can hear it spinning up. Complete it. And it's going through the procedure of, of fixing the drive. As you just saw, we have firmware access. It automatically gave us access, so that's good. And now, soon, we should see here initialization. There it is. So now it's showing the correct capacity, the wrong correct model, and everything looks good. And now we can back up the firmware like normal. Uh, let's show that it's initializing correctly. And there you go. Now the drive is working. Um, so next here, we're going to back up the firmware. Let's check the smart. So see, this is what happened with this drive. So because the drive has disk surface degradation, those entries here in red indicate that the disks have the greater of a time and, uh, and uh, they started to get damaged. In Seagate, on this model drive, because of this occurring, eventually it's gonna cause firmware issues and the drive no longer works correctly. It doesn't mount on the computer and it's unresponsive. And so it requires uh, firmware uh, repairs in order to get access to the data. Now, a lot of people think that this repair on this particular model drive also works on other model drives. For example, 7200.11 does have this problem. 7200.12 and every other version after this has a slightly different type of firmware which this solution does not apply to. If, if the same solution is applied, it will cause irreversible damage that would be much harder to solve and cost a lot, a lot more to solve and recover the data. So a lot of people don't understand this and they find stuff on the internet and apply it blindly and uh, they cause damage that uh, uh, it's irreversible. So let's see if we have data access here next. Uh, we're just gonna do a test real quick. I'm just gonna pause for a second so I can get a, another hard drive. All right, so what we are doing here next is basically build a heads map of all the heads on the drive. As you can see, this, this drive has 
eight heads and four discs. So inside this drive, we have four separate discs, each with two heads that make up a total of eight heads. And the reason why we did is because we want to test each individual head to make sure that it's working correctly. So let's see, do we have access to the data? Yes, we do. It seems like this, this drive is full of data. Very interesting. Okay, so let's test here. Then you're gonna see how the drive is gonna read by shuffling through all the heads in different zones of the drive. So as you can see, uh, head five is good. All the other ones initially were good. I'm gonna stop head five here. Let's deactivate it. Head seven and six are good. Four, three, two, one, zero. All good. All right, great. Now let's restore. And let's see if we can access files. More than likely, we're going to run into some errors uh, because the drive is degraded. Uh, as you can see, this drive was formatted for um, for a Mac. And there you go. We have access to data. That's it. Uh, so that's the story on this one. If you need help with uh, hard drives that are part of external drives that don't mount or uh, uh, something weird is going on with them. We are data recovery specialists. You can find us. You can find us at datarecoveryguru.com. If you go on there, you're gonna see a blue button called "Let's start with a free diagnosis." Click on it. You'll be presented with a form. Fill it out with your name, phone number, email, and so on. And then we'll be in touch with you shortly after. If you have questions, you can text, WhatsApp, Signal, or call us at 617-571-9172. Thanks so much. Have a nice day.